if, if an ET shows up here, it depends on what they look like. But when they look different than what we look like, it's a lot harder. And they will help you. They understand the fear. You know, I told I told that to Da once. Um, I, he, he said, why do you ask? I said, well, because, you know, you scare me every time you come in. And he said, "You, I scare you? And I said, yeah, you know you do. And he goes, well, you know, you humans, you scare us. And I said, excuse me? And he said, well, you, you scare us. He said, you know, when you do that thing that you call smiling and you bar your teeth like that, it looks like you're going to eat us. I had, a, I had an awareness through my whole life when I was in my teens and my 20s. I knew I was living a different life, but I thought everybody did. I thought everybody had a life running on a different track parallel to the life they have on this earth. I just thought it was just the way life was. Well, you don't get through this life without having contact or a visit from your cosmic family. They come in to check on you. You know, on what level that happens or what, but do you remember it? Probably not. Most do not. But those of you who do or have a sense of it, it doesn't matter. Talk about it. Just let's make this an everyday thing and let's show some curiosity and not and to think that we're the only ones, I mean, I know intel- people who are educated, I would say they're in- educated, I won't say they're intelligent, they're educated, highly educated, and they, they think we're alone in the universe. They honestly believe that the only life is here on planet Earth. We talked to you about the, the great Earth changes, that's what they call them. We talked to you about the great Earth changes. Um, well, we are in the thick of it now, he said, and time to get to work. I have a couple of topics I want to also ask about. I guess the one that most relates to what we were just talking about is frequency. One question related to that I had was, what have your guys told you about um, manifesting and um, perhaps attraction through frequency or anything on that subject? And um, I'll let you go ahead and comment on that. And then I have one other thing okay. I want to share about frequency right after that. Yeah, only one at a time, Troy. <laughs> my brain can only hold on to one question at a time. Um, so yeah, my guys did teach me a lot of stuff as I was growing up about uh, frequency and how everything is about frequency. We are electrical beings. We are you know beings of energy, and we're not we're not what we seem to be. We're not bodies. We're not these bodies that we're looking at right now. We are frequency it's all a hologram and it's all you know happening inside our inside our minds and and uh, as the course of miracles say it says we're all you know we're all actually uh god's just dreaming this you know and we're all at home with god and i i like that because that feels true and feels right to me but in this world which is a matrix and is uh an upside down and inside out and backwards world it helps to know that frequency is everything, especially when it comes to uh, manifesting good health and financial success and good relationships, the things that you want in your life. And it's not been taught to us on any level that it comes down to your, your intention and your attitude toward things like money. If you have fear that you're not going to have enough money, well, you're not going to have enough money. If you have any fears that you have are going to manifest. And so, and that's all frequency. You know, whenever there's fear that comes into to the situation, whatever it is, it's going to create, the, it's going to bring the ego out. And the ego is the little devil who's riding on your left shoulder. And this world is a world of duality. We all chose to come in and experience duality because we want to play that game. So here we are, we got to play by the rules. And it's not fun. I don't think I don't really like it. I don't like it at all. As a matter of fact, I mean, I remember it being in sixth density where everything is just oneness and just oneness. And um, that's so much nicer. <laughs> this is like a, a, a video game that you get trapped in and you're always having, you having to strategize a bit. I find you strategize and you have to plan. The fear creeps in. Um, even with, with me, I, I, didn't have it so much until um, the attacks started on me after the book was published and I was attacked and poisoned and they they lowered my frequency through the use of um, you know radiation and and um, elf they called it elf extremely low frequency uh, radiation EMFs they used and directed energy weapons they used everything mind control 
that did, they succeeded in bringing my, my level of fear down, uh, my level of fear up, I would say. I didn't have really any fears before that. I felt like, I felt like, quite, I felt like I knew how this world was put together, somewhat I understood it, and I could, I could walk through it playing by the rules as I understood them to be and be okay. But when they lowered my frequency and I got sick, it introduced fear to me. And that's a very unpleasant thing to go through. Um, so I, I, but I, I, I understand that nothing happens without my consent. So I, my soul agreed to have that experience. And by having that experience, I have developed way more compassion for the humans on this planet and what they've had to struggle with. And I'm also, my life is also being recorded so that it can be understood by this grand experiment that was planet earth, where we went into duality and the creator allowed duality and free will instead of just oneness. Um, we want to remember and understand everything we can from it. So my life is going to be um, available to so-called future which there is no future, but so-called, it's always hard to have these talks because you don't know, but so-called, let's say, call, call it future um, earthlings. When they go into the 5D, when the Terrans go into the 5D, eventually they're gonna forget what it was like, their origins and what it was like, but they'll have my life and other lives to, to observe, to see just what a struggle and what it was like and why the human species of planet Earth are so special and unique. And it's because of the all the experiences that they went through, you know, the highs and the lows and the suffering. People say, well, why, why do you have to suffer? Why did you choose to suffer? Well, because it's there, you know, and I'm here in this world of suffering and I need to see what that's all about and, and understand it because we want to make sure that we never forget what this was about because that's why the experiment took place to begin with. Did I answer your question? I got to start writing down your questions because I could start talking and then I, did I yeah, answer it? Yeah, sure. That was yeah. um, a beautiful yeah. answer to that okay. um, question about manifesting through frequency. And oh. I wanted to share, um, I can let um, Jonelle go next after I share this bit of information related to personal frequency. Um, this might be the, I think the second time I've shared this bit of information publicly, but the first time on these um, Sufan YouTube videos um, going out to the public. About four years ago, it was late, um, I think very late 2018, after I started to awaken after my initial um, traumatic alien contacts. And um, I started to become more deeply connected with the gray and the mantis beings in the group that was involved. I was involved with and um, just a part of one of the mantis beings um, taught me a lesson and I won't go into deep, deep detail, but basically it was a, a very complex download and it was like, the, the only way I can put it into words is the message was that all of our mind, emotions, physical body, energy body, spirit body, even spirit guides around us, soul contracts, and um, everything else on other levels do connect to each other. They're not separate things and separate entities. And so our personal frequency within our minds, emotions, and bodies here do affect how we also, they kind of affect each other and affect our, how our vibration goes out to guides and other beings. And um, yeah, that's basically it. So that's a, a quick bit about um, how that would work through manifesting through frequency that I'm actually just, that was before the walk-in. Um, I had a walk-in experience almost two years ago. And um, more recently, it was another mantis being that I woke up from a dream from telling me or reminding me pretty much of the same information. So 
that message continues and I'll be talking about that more soon in other um, platforms. So for now, I'll lower my hand and Jonelle can um, go next and I probably have something else to share later. Thank you. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Jonelle. So I just want to say you're, you sound really good. So I'm hoping that means that uh, you are feeling better and that some of the therapies you're doing are uh, helping, you know, the progression. <clears throat> so my question is, well, I have several, but the first question really is about, you know, where are we in this ascension process? So, you know, you, you listen to all this stuff and it all seems like it's imminent. Things are getting ready to happen and then they don't happen. And you're like, you know, well, on God's timeline soon is, has a lot of different meanings. <laughs> so um, I get a little frustrated with uh, waiting. And at the same time, I, I've just been trying to say, you know, it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. And my job is to continue to work on my own uh, wherever I have issues or, um, and that's always on my mind. Like, am I doing everything I need to do for my own, you know, progression? And I feel pretty isolated and alone. And, um, you know, I don't know that how much I'm, I'm affecting anybody else on the planet. Uh, other than maybe I don't have to be interacting with people one-on-one -on -one to be um, an instrument. So uh, really the first question is, you know, have you gotten any updates on our progress and um, how humanity as a whole is doing uh, and that whole process? And well, yeah. Well, first of all, yeah, I just want to say, you, yeah, yeah. You don't have to be out in public. You don't have to be around people. You know, going back to what Troy was talking about, how just you as an individual are connected. We are all connected. I mean, it's the first thing my guys taught me. We are all one with the creator. So anything that you do to raise your frequency affects the all. Everything, everything. is. You'd be amazed at how that is. So just because you're not out amongst other people and not um, – speaking to them even about this stuff, just you sitting at home, raising your frequency, being in the frequency of love and unconditional love for yourself, for nature, for all that's huge. You go out into your yard and you express appreciation for the trees and the birds. And that's, that's, that, that's the best thing you can do. That's huge. So don't worry about that. Um, as far as what's going on, my guys don't keep me much, you know, because I don't have, as they say, you know, I'm boots on the ground and I just need to stay, stay centered on what I'm doing here and stuff. And, you know, we, we, we tangle a bit. I'm not the easiest one to get along with. They have to put up with me. Um, but they did give me an update. The last update I got was probably back in February or so, maybe, and maybe March. All I got was that there was a setback. They gave me that, that there had been a setback at that time. Something had happened. Um, plan, they called it like a plan A or a plan that maybe it was. I, I actually want to say that, that it was plan B and that they were going with and that, that something had happened. I have no idea what it was, but that they had to shift gears very quickly. It was something that came from out of left field that the dark had pulled that they had no idea of. And I'm not sure why they sh shared that with me, except that I did hear then a few other truthers and I don't follow a lot. You know, I just don't. For, I mean, I, I keep my eye on it a little bit. Just check every day or two and check a few people and that's it. But so I had a, there were a few others who said the same thing. There had been something, some kind of a setback. But that was back then. Now, I've not had any actual words from them other than, but I get the sense that things, what I got was an image yesterday of, a, of an avalanche, like a snow, a snowball was coming down a mountain. It was just a little snowball, but it very quickly built and built and built. And it was now 
just about to turn into an avalanche. It had turned into this mammoth ball of snow, you know, up on the mountain. And I got that vision. And I'm sure that that is probably, you know, telling me, watch, it's going to take out, it's going to take off pretty fast. Now things are going to, and I've always had the sense that it has been very slow moving and very slow, very frustrating. And all these, all these people saying, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. And this is the month. And, you know, and people are like, you know, they're waiting for Trump to come back maybe, or they're waiting for the other shoe to fall on somebody else or whatever it is that they're thinking. And we have to remember, we're not going to be saved. That's not the agenda. Trump's not going to save us. The, the ETs are not going to save us. Nobody's going to save us. This is a, a game that we're playing and we are creating how it goes and how it plays out by our individual attitudes and frequency every day. That's coming back to Joan Al, you know, telling, saying how important it is that you keep your frequency high because we are the creators of this world. On a moment by moment basis, we are presented with endless possibilities of what path we can go and how this is gonna play out. We are the ones who create it. We're in the split, by the way, we are coming through the split that it happened, of course, you know, the whole fake, you know, I think I can say pandemic, you know, that that whole thing was was created by the collective as a way to bring about the split. Do you choose fear? Do you choose to trust yourself and trust in your creator and trust in, in God? You know, are you going to fall down and bow to the power, the powerful ones who tell you to put the damn mask on and go let them stick poison in your arm? You know, it, it was a chance for every individual to take a stand on and show where they stand. When I would meet with people on the astral plane, when I did my light reading and I would say to them, your frequency is you're almost there. You know, it is, it is a, a black and white thing. You know, you have to be of such a, a certain frequency. You, you can't like sneak into the fifth dimension. It really is. You have to be of a certain frequency. And I would say, you know, work on your fears, work on the things that, that you feel might be, holding you back and keeping you in the 3D, in the in the thing of fear and duality, because it's time to move out of duality, move into heart-centeredness and unity consciousness. So that's that's the game that we're that we've been playing, this whole thing. And they're gonna keep the the dark ones are losing their hold, of course, and there's not as many of them. I believe that. I see it myself. I mean, I don't know if you're seeing chemtrails, for instance, I used to always say that when I don't believe anything has happened until the chemtrails are gone. When the chemtrails are gone, I'll start saying, yes, we're, we're getting there. Well, we have not seen a chemtrail in a long time. And we drove from Tucson to, out to uh, Newport Beach, California, and then we drove cross country back to Wisconsin. And we took our time doing that 10 days or something. We took eight days. We didn't see a single chemtrail all across the country. And we haven't had any since we got back here to Wisconsin. To me, that's success. And that proves that we are gaining, the light hats are, are, are gaining ground. So I trust in what's happening. You can see it day by day. Even the news is reporting some of the news. And I don't watch the news, but I see on YouTube a few times. I've been, I've clicked on a few things because the, 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 tag on it intrigued me, you know, I'm like, what they're talking about what? And people have sent me um, things, for instance, that um, um, Fox News had a thing on there where they're talking about, you know, the the numbers in regard to the outcome, if you took the, if you took the, the injection, you know, and um, I saw a, a big sign from New York City, a big Metatron thing, I think they're called, where it's giving the statistics of what you know what what might happen to you if you decide to take um, that, and so that's right out in plain sight. That's huge. That never would have existed. I can see it in my own life. Every time I would do an interview in the past, every time I would pay dearly for it, which is why I disappeared for months and even maybe for years. Why well, I got I got so sick. I mean, they would attack me. I would be attacked and they would let me know, this is because you did this. They hit me with directed energy weapons and they said, this is for that interview you gave. And so I would know it. So they were right on me. They're not, they're not doing that anymore. 
I gave an interview a couple months ago and I didn't get attacked. So I'm doing this one and I don't expect to get attacked um, because they're just, they're not there. They don't have the resources, I don't believe. And they just can't mess around with someone as small as me now, you know, they don't, they have to focus on what they can, but I don't think the, the powerful ones that are there anymore. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. And it's not always as it seems. That's the other thing. It's not always as it seems the stuff that's going on. It's confusing and you have to just hold your ground and trust, which is really hard to do because people are afraid of being played for fools. And I know that, you know, and they hold the whole trust, trust the plan thing. That's a tough one. That's a tough, tough one because it can be a ploy. It can be a, um, a, uh, what's that called? A, uh, Trojan horse kind of a thing, I guess, you know? So, but these are the times when trust is called for and you either feel it in your heart or you don't, and you know who to believe and who not to believe. So just hold the faith. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. And one other question about the frequency, you know, I, because I hear you talk about raising your frequency and I understand it as a concept, but I'm not always sure like, how do you know if you're raising your frequency? Is that about letting go of your fears? Is that about um, forgiving people? Is that about having compassion? I don't always have love and compassion for everybody. Have, you know, I have kind of a general love and compassion. Uh, and then sometimes I wonder, uh, one thing I, I was taught in India was that the outer world is a reflection of the inner world. So if you have an issue with the outer world, you know, it's all about it here. And then, I, then you know, that kind of comes to mind from time to time if I have an issue, with something yeah. in my life. I don't think I'm in fear much, but, but I always wonder, you know, what exactly do I need to do to raise my frequency? How do I know if I'm doing that? You'll know it because you'll feel in your heart a, a sense of peace and a, a kind of an ongoing level of joy. It's just a, a feeling of joy that's that's there, but during these times, I know that that's hard to sustain. Also, but I can I can give you some some clues and hints on how to do it, and it sounds like you're you're doing a lot of those. I think one of the one of the testing testing modes that I used for myself when I was on this journey was to get myself to where I could feel love for those who had wronged me or who had. Um, in this matrix had, had supposedly hurt me, had, um, or whether they be in a personal way or on the big stage of life. So in other words, love thy enemies, you know, can you really truly look at this person who has ruined your life or has influenced your life or has, you know, and you can look at a political figure if you want, who we know has done horrific things to innocent people maybe, or, you know, have used their power in different ways. You can look at that, or you can look in your own life. I'm sure there's plenty of people we can all choose from who have hurt us, who have betrayed us, who have, have you know, in our minds um, done us wrong. Can you look at them and honestly feel love for them? Because that's where we have to be. That's where we have to be. We have to get to the point where those who we see as we call them the dark, we have to recognize that those who are playing that role in our life, whether it's personal or on the higher level of political agenda in, in the outer world, big stage, they chose to play. Those are souls. They are part of us. And they chose to play that part in this world of duality because we needed to have the dark. We needed to have them here in order for us to experience that. And so we need to, in ourselves, deep within ourselves, find appreciation for that because otherwise we wouldn't be having this experience and we wanted this experience. So they, in some ways, took on a big role to play and it's a challenge for them. It's just like with myself, why did I choose to go so far into suffering and allow myself to be sick? I was a healer. I never allowed myself to get sick. I could fix my own body. It was easy peasy to do. And suddenly I couldn't. Why? Why would I do that? because I wanted the experience. On some level, I wanted the experience because I'll forevermore know what it was like to have that. And that's what we came here to experience. So we have to look at those souls, those people who are playing that part 
and find within us an appreciation of some sort and love and forgiveness, which is, quant I call it quantum forgiveness. So in your life, you have someone who has done something to you that costs you, costs you a job, costs you a relationship, costs you your feelings, costs you something. You have to be able to look at them and forgive them, not because they did something wrong to you and you're going to be the bigger person and rise above it all and forgive them and look down on them and say, I forgive you. No, but because you look at them and you see them as your equal as, and they are innocent. They are innocent. What they did to you, they did out of innocence. And you see that and you truly get it because you've done it to others. You see, you've been that same person to others, but you didn't know it. And you're unaware of it because you're innocent. We've all been there. There's a part of us all. We're multidimensional beings. There's a part of us that exists on the lower spectrum and those and that, that it's, it expresses itself on the higher spectrum. We're all things. We're all one another. We're all, there's no separation between any of us. We're sitting here looking at other bodies thinking we're all living different lives. Mm, sorry, we're all one. And so for you to have any judgment or hatred or anger toward someone because they did something to you, it was done out of innocence because you know what? If they were awake and aware and in the light, they wouldn't have done it. They only do it because they're still in that place of duality, still in that place and they're suffering. If they're hurting you, and many of us can relate to this as we're awakening and we have to um, allow family and friends to fall away because they think we're crazy. They think we've got, you know, I especially have that where there's no understanding of why I have chosen this path for my life and no tolerance for it. I just have to look at, and it's not with pity or with judgment. It's just, it's just is what it is. They're just where they are. And there's no harm or wrong in that. There can't be any wrong in it. Well, how could there be any wrong in it? Because this is all divine. We're all creatures of the divine. And so you, when you can get to that place and you truly see it, and it takes away the ability for anyone to hurt you. Do I feel sorrow because I have no family left to speak of because they've all turned against me? Yeah, I, there's sadness. I, you know, I miss that connection. But I send love daily to all of them. I just, I have to, because I, I want them to awaken. I want them to come into awareness. And, you know, my concern is that they're using me as an excuse to stay in the dark because they don't want to join me in my craziness. You know, they're afraid of being judged as being crazy and being looked at and ridiculed. And so I feel bad about that for them. And that's a terrible place to be. I'm blessed. I did. I was smart enough that when I came into this world, I brought with me um, an immunity to other people's opinion of me. I don't care. Thank God I did that. You know, and that is freedom. That's right there is freedom. When you have truly honest, and I mean, I when I was a teenager, I thought I was weird because I didn't care. And so I pretended to care. But I was like, nah, I can't do this. <laughs> it just didn't fit. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend like I care. When I, I just I just knew that it didn't matter, that that was their issue, whatever it was they were thinking about me was on them. And so to me, that's where it comes down to is, you know, you're in a higher frequency when you can cultivate that kind of feeling where you look at everyone and you just accept them for who they are, where they are in this moment. And when you do that, you'll have these amazing moments, Jonelle, where you will be out in public like I We'll share the story of where I was when I was at the at the 7-Eleven, you know, and sitting there and just sitting there, not thinking anything special, but just being present. And um, this young man jumped into the pickup, this dilapidated pickup truck next to me. And he was he's a young guy, a hardworking kid. You could tell he was wearing, you know, hard clothes. He'd worked hard that day. He got in, he had this big old hot dog, and he just like I looked over him, he just he was just like shoving it in his mouth. And, you know, because he was just so hungry. I felt such overwhelming love for him. I just looked at him and I just, I saw the innocence in him. I saw him for who he, he was just so innocent as he was sat there, you know, like, you know, such a human, you know, he just, he just was just such a typical human golfing down his food and shoving it in as fast as he could. And I just wanted to roll down my window and say, do you know how innocent you are? Do you know how you are loved? Do you know that you are a creature of, of God and that you are perfect and divine just as you are? I mean, because I was feeling all those things. And when you can do that 
and it's spontaneous that'll build within you and you'll carry that and you'll you'll feel that way and you won't ever want to judge anyone ever again and that's when we're free when we no longer judge one another we no longer see we no longer have a need to because we know we're all just one it's all okay and it's okay to be unawakened it's okay to to be who you are so hope that helps that helps a lot thank you